So let me tell you a little bit how I think we should do this. Uh, I'll, I don't want to speak too much at the beginning. I maybe I introduce myself a little bit. I'll speak a little bit about what I'd like us to do. And then we'll uh, maybe have some time for questions at the end. Um, I can't go too long, unfortunately, because I have a baby that I need to put to sleep in around 6.15. So, um, so let's start. Um, so I'll introduce myself to the people who don't know me. Uh, my name is Guy Eshed, and I'm the principal flutist of the IPO, the Israel Philharmonic. Um, I started my professional career in England uh, after I finished studying in Germany. I, um, I got a job uh, which was very unusual job to start with um, in a German music ensemble called Ensemble 360 in Sheffield, which is sort of in the center of England, which consisted uh, 11 musicians, a wind quintet, a string quintet and a piano. And we did sort of everything, uh, all German music um, combinations possible. We did a few recordings. We toured a lot, mainly in England. Um, and then three years after that, that was 2005, I got a job. I won an audition for the Berlin State Opera. Uh, that was uh, still uh, is a music um, conducted or uh, managed by Daniel Barenboim uh, as principal flute. Uh, so I moved to Berlin back. I actually was studying in Berlin in Germany. Um, and I played with them for two seasons. It was a, um, in German they say Le, uh, um, um, Sonderauftrag, so it was kind of Zeit Auftrag. It's a um, sort of a contract that was for two years. Uh, the other solo flute was um, pregnant and I uh, covered for her for those two years. And then I won a job in Stockholm in uh, Sweden with the Swedish Radio Orchestra. Uh, with Daniel Harding conducting. Uh, I played there for one season. Um, it was kind of uh, difficult for me uh, with the weather. Everyone's there. I lost everyone. Everyone there somehow lost my connection with everyone. But I cannot see anyone. Somehow. You got Florida. Here, here you are. Oh, okay. So where was I in my little story? I was playing in Stockholm for one year. Um, I, I found it very hard with the weather. And I decided I need something more sunny. So I won a job with the uh, uh, Florence uh, Opera House, the Maggio Musicale, and the Zubin Meta. And I moved there. I played uh, there for three years. Um, and then I had the opportunity to take the audition with the Israel Philharmonic and to win it. Um, so uh, here I am for the last five years. So if everyone has a, a question about musicians' life, traveling, playing in different orchestras, uh, different styles, audition experience. I'm here to uh, answer everything as, as much as I could. And, and I would like to speak a tiny bit about this little topic that I gave for this uh, meeting, this uh, think with the heart and try to feel with your brain, which sounds very uh, philosophical, but the, the idea was um, to uh, try and summarize, at least for me, what is a successful uh, audition playing or a competition playing. I know we are speaking, uh, since we are hosted by the orchestra, uh, I'd like to somehow direct this um, conversation or meeting that we're doing to, um, to orchestral playing. Um, and I don't know how many of you here uh, taking auditions uh, or, you know, um, dealing with this sort of uh, very um, obnoxious and stressful thing. Um, I, did I took, I think, around 30 auditions in my life and I probably won uh, six or five out of them. 
So if I can give any tips and any ideas about this combination of, what, what did I mean with this combination of thinking from your uh, heart and feeling from the brain? Music is an is a art form that cannot live only with imagination and fantasy. And it cannot live only with order and structure. It needs both. And I think this is the hardest things, thing for us to, um, to combine, especially when we are auditioning. Sometimes we are trying to express ourselves in a way that takes us uh, too much outside the borders of the box that we need to fulfill in terms of the rhythm, the intonation, the style, um, and all the things that need to be there that represent the form, the structure, the thing that music cannot live without. And yet, sometimes uh, we forget about our personality, about the character, about the things that we want to express. And we focus too much on this little box of structure and form. And then the playing is not uh, convincing enough. It's not characterful enough. Um, so how do we find this magic balance? So that's what I would like to try and, and help some of you, whoever wants to play. I want to see if someone already asked to play. No one yet. I wrote in our chat, uh, since you all muted for now, um, if anyone would like to play, it would be great if they can write it in the chat. Um, if they can just say their name, where they're from, age, and what they would like to play, and then we can uh, choose. So maybe if we can have three or four candidates, that would be great. And each one would get around 15 minutes and we can work a little bit about uh, things that you're working and trying to prepare for auditions or competitions. Um, that would be, uh, I'd be very happy. And then maybe we can leave some time for uh, questions at the end. Um, so Ronnie wants to play Daphne, she's 18 or he, I don't know, we will find out soon. Um, so we can start, I think. Can I get Ronnie on the screen somehow? Sharon. I don't see you. Uh, how do I do? I'm very new to this whole Zoom thing, so I'm fiddling with this speaker view, maybe? Can, yes, okay. Hi. Sharon. Hi. Is it okay if we did it in English? Yeah, of course. Great. Okay, so uh, Daphnis, wow, what a solo. You wanna go for it? Yeah. Come on.
fantastic. That was really, really, really good playing. It was really, really beautiful. Um, let's start from the top. I think, um, so if I'm speaking now, if I'm going back to this thing of um, uh, personality versus um, order, I think you showed a lot of personality, a beautiful sound and beautiful uh, colors, but I think it can be a bit more structured within the frame. Um, so let me ask you, do you know what's going on in the orchestra here? Yeah. So can you tell us, can you share it with us? About the string? Yes, who, who's accompanying you? What do we have here as a, as a bass? Um. It's okay, it's not a test. I don't want to embarrass anyone. So <laughs> I, we just, I just want to speak about it so, we, so it's clear to everyone. So we have always an upbeat of the basses and then the harmony with the, with the strings. So if we are a tiny bit outside of the structure, mm -hmm. it would be very, very difficult to accompany you. So what I want you to try and think is to be free within the box. So within this bum, 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 bum. Um, this is always the same. This always has to stay. And now you can take your time and do everything you want within it, within this, okay, okay. within this uh, frame. It's almost as if I uh, told you, um, if I put you now on the roof of Azrieli, Azrieli is the highest building in, uh, in Israel, and I would um, tell you to, uh, to go to the very end of the building and look around without any, uh, any fence or wall how how much how how much freedom would you have to would you feel that you have in order to look around not so much i mean because you would be afraid but if i give you the structure meaning the wall if i give you sort of the bars or something that is actually sort of giving you less space but actually you will be a bit more courageous because you will have the frame that protects you so that's what i i was tiny be tiny tiny bit missing here is this sense that I always feel this pulse, and then yeah. the beautiful, the beautiful um, um, colors and the, the, the timing that you're taking should be within this, um, it is this, within this structure. Okay. Between. Okay. Now another thing, just tiny bit, uh, one little thing about the beginning. Try not to uh, force too much the first A flat. Okay. Okay. I felt that you're using tiny bit too much lips in the in the beginning in the first. It felt a tiny bit as if you are stressed about it. Try to really take a, a so when you start this solo, always try to imagine for two seconds your first two bars. Bum, 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 and then start. And then, okay, then, then you really can breathe in the rhythm. Yes. Okay, that's another good tip that I can give to every one of you when you are auditioning. So in whoever, who, people that don't know maybe how the audition process usually go, um, uh, you're being called excerpts when you go on stage. It's very uh, unpleasant. So the excerpt can go from Ravel to Bach to Beethoven to Debussy, and you have to kind of uh, find your way within all those kind of uh, uh, different styles and different uh, atmospheres and, and uh, tempi and uh, whatever. So always take your time before it will it will feel for you as a as a eternity that you, this 20 minutes 20 seconds that you're taking for yourself just organizing your thoughts uh but do it between each except you can always take your time get your structure and then breathe in the in the right tempo with within the the right frame of mind because your first breath felt to me too narrow too hectic and that's why the a flat was suffering a little bit Okay, so I really want you to try and think about the rhythms. Bum, bum, bring this frame doesn't change. Bum, bum. And then when you take the breath, try to really take it over the whole bar. So really like in almost in three beats, and then you start on the fourth, right? Yeah. Okay, so bum, bim, bum. Okay? Yeah, okay. Try to relax this A flat. We don't want it to sound too stressed. Okay, okay last, last uh, thing of my talk, if we are speaking about being stressed or not, what's happening in this uh, solo, in the ballet? So this is uh, Ravel, okay. and Floyd, it's, it's a ballet music. Uh, 
this solo appears sort of quite in the end of the whole ballet. Usually we play the second suite in the orchestra versions, but not always. But uh, what happened there, it's important to that we know what's going on. Yeah, I know what's happening. You want to tell us? Yeah. Um, <laughs> they try to uh, wake up uh, Chloe, I think, and they dance, dancing around her. So that, that's a that's tiny bit later. So this is actually Daphnis, who is the guy, who is the shepherd, who's coming to wake up Chloe. And actually, they're playing a pantomime game that actually um, they imitate um, pan and syrinx, which is another very uh, fluty thing. So the whole solo should feel very seductive and very sensual. That's why I don't want to have a at the beginning. I want it to say something very, very melatef, uh, very uh, um, stroking and warm. Okay, that's why I need your first breath to be in tempo and like really try to think about it in a relaxed way. Okay. Okay, let's let's play a, li a little bit again. Try to try to always think about this fourth beat that we said that the fourth beat is always leading the pizzicato of the basses is always leading to the next uh, bar. So try not to take the time there because then the basses will have to kind of wait and they don't know where to put back the the, um, uh, the next beat. I just can just tell you from my experience that I uh, when I played once in Florence. Um, I even don't remember who was the conductor actually, but the, the first bassist, uh, he was trying to wait all the time for me. And I felt it so difficult because I, I, they were never with me. Uh, and then I just came and said, look, you just play in time and I'll take my time around you. So okay. when you want to play, uh, play there, if you take too much time here, the upbeat is already not rhythmical. So the okay. upbeat, the fourth beat, has always needs always to be in time. So if you play the fourth beat already goes to the next bar, okay? Okay. Lead to the, the next bar. If you take the time, it's fine, but the mi fa mi do dies needs to be already leading to the next bar. But otherwise, okay. the basses will not be with you. Okay. okay. Last thing for this, I know we don't have much time. Try to think one second about those repeated uh, G, G sharps mm -hmm. or A flat. Um, and that has to do now, we spoke a little bit about the um, structure, the rhythm. And try not to think about something more personal here. Try to give me a bit more character. So those repeated G sharps, what, what do they mean? you think too. We spoke about the story a little bit that he's trying to wake her up, he's trying to seduce her, he wants her. Um, it's very erotic, so try to think. So there's something stubborn here. He, he, he's trying, he's trying again, he's trying again and again and again. So all, all the G shops needs to be with some kind of development. Now I felt they all were a bit too monotonous. I felt you playing okay. a bit. You were always thinking now, oh, I just want to hate this uh, A flat that it will not drop. That's how it sounded. So it's a bit, was a bit like. They all sounded a bit the same. So let's try to each one give a bit more passion, a bit more uh, tension in the sound. Okay, so try to think. So the last one is really like uh, uh, very, very um, breathless. Okay, mm -hmm. let's try again, just the beginning, and try to think about those little two little things. I know it's a lot of information, but try. Good, 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 
with fantastic great 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 just the last bar mm -hmm. try not again you were, uh, try to take the time tiny bit before the bar line because again you did the and then you stop try to take more of the time on the f sharp and then the mi fa mi do is already dropping okay. to the next bar okay uh, let's do from there and then i think i need to move or, okay. no, we have still a bit more time so And the first C sharp is the same thing like the G's before. Um, P, always yeah. with M, always with a feeling of sensuality, of trying to get her. I really need to feel your heart beating here. So don't never play those, those repeated notes um, dry because then we lose your character. Again, it sounds then machine like. We don't want. Okay, we want. Him, him. Always with a bit of uh, stress and tension on the first note, not too short. Okay, the C sharp. Do the same thing. Something good, good, good. Okay. Huh? Continue, continue, continue. Team, um, stay straight from there, from the C sharp. Okay, and those two bars are a really great example for not being enough in the rhythm, in rhythmical structure. Okay, because you take the time, if you take the time, you need to bring it back. Okay, we call it in Italian what? Rubato. Mm -hmm. What, which means? I like to steal that time. Steal, perfect. Not, not many people know, stolen, stolen time now. But we are um, people with more high morality. So if we steal something, we what? We give it back. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. so give it back. If you take time. You have to give it back. Okay, and same thing in the next round. You cannot take time suddenly and, and, and change the whole uh, tempo, okay? Because this is exactly the first things that audition committee was used to play very much in tempo is noticing the first thing, the rhythmical aspect has to be there, okay? okay. Together with your character. And you have a lot of character because I see it how much you want to express, but that's exactly what I mean. The expression has to come within the frame, okay? okay. Try to imagine, I always say to everyone, and I repeat this, uh, I think it's a nice example. I have here a uh, carton boards of Carmela, which is an uh, Israeli uh, delivery, very boring boxes. Think about a, a shoe box, very boring carton gray. Okay, I give you this box, but inside, they do everything you want inside. Make it the most interesting box with marzipans, chocolate, and, and, and uh, confetti and, and whatever, and puppets or whatever, but the box stay the box, okay? So now I hear too many confetti and not enough structure. Do again, and try to put your personality inside the, the rhythm, the tempo. Um, from where? Do, 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 do. That was, much, that was much better. I suggest to you to take a tiny bit more time after the, after the D sharp. Not already in the beginning of the bar. Oh, okay. Tiny bit later. Okay, so you can really fall down. Okay? Try one, time, one more time and tiny bit move the rubato to the middle of the bar and not in the beginning of the bar. Continue, continue. Pom, 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 pom. Okay, good. Two little things. The first thing of the structure and the thing that we need is intonation. Pay attention. All our C sharps, flutists are always sharp. Okay, so try to always give it a bit more darker sound. Okay. In the color, because now it was really sharp. Okay, okay. tiny bit. <laughs> okay. 
And now I think you can create more character and more stroking feeling in those F, F, E. Okay, mm -hmm. tiny bit, maybe more softer tongue, maybe more brushed. Less pa, be, be, be. That's for me a little bit boring. Mm -hmm. um, um, um. Always be sort of this kind of ending of the notes that are a bit yeah, imitating the vowel M. Um, mm -hmm. Mm, as if I'm whispering for you, if I'm buzzing for you. Um, okay, so the same thing. Um, okay, just this and then we, we have to move on. Okay. okay can, can I have it a bit more soft, less, less uh, sprozzandi? It's always something. Um, um, Okay, let's, let's attack, because now, again, let's think about the story. Now, now it seems to me as if you're doing this to him, to her, him. Okay, try to do it a bit more round. Um, um. Good. good, good, good. And the C sharp. Oh. That's it. Okay, Ronnie, sorry, I have to give someone else a chance. It was no, lovely hearing you. Thanks for taking this Thank initiative. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done. Okay. Okay, let's see who else wanted to play. Shaked and Anna. Let's see. Uh, good. So we have another two. So Shaked and then Anna. Is that uh, right? Yes. Good. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I changed my mind. I want to play a rainy sonata in D. Okay. Okay. Although it's, yeah, okay, let's do a little bit. Fine. It's okay? Yeah. Why did you change your mind? I'm curious. Um, I don't know. <laughs> because I have to say, um, uh, Undine is great, and Anneke is one of my favorite uh, composers. Um, but uh, in case you are preparing something, uh, any competition, any audition will all have Mozart. That's why I thought it was wise to use this platform and play Mozart because it's stressful. You have 100 people listening to you. And uh, it's a, it's, Mozart became, whether we like it or not, our, our, our uh, business card because it's always the first thing people hear in auditions. The first thing, before any excerpt, before... They hear you tune your A, and then you have to start Mozart. So I, I don't want to tell you what to play, but I just think for, for future references, always when you have opportunities to play Mozart in front of people or get some advice about how to play Mozart in the right way that would pass you the first round, because again, I'm now speaking, maybe you know it, but I'm speaking to everyone here. Um, most of auditions these days for orchestras are done first rounds by uh, behind a screen, which is a very uh, cruel um, feeling for the contestants, but uh, that's the fairest mode of auditioning. And usually you would play your Mozart in front of the curtain. I don't know if you had any experience with playing in front of a curtain. You did. Mm -hmm. you did. I had. And how did it go? It's go well, but, but it's very difficult and I've read that not all the notes will be out. I think I say. You mean out? I'm like to a chutzah, the kavana. It's a chutzah kavana. So out meaning like that they will be audible, that people could hear you well, or that you yeah. just will not speak. Um, not speak, I think. Okay. And which okay. Con which Mozart concerto did you play then? The D or the I played G? both, uh, D and the G. Uh -huh. um, in some concert and audition, um, I but, don't know, I, I play it a lot, but uh, it's, I have the fear every time. <laughs> so let's, let, let's work on it. I think it's important for you, more than okay. mine. So I will, start, I, I will play a D major. Good, great. Thank <laughs> you. 
let's work a tiny bit on this and then we continue. I think I really, I, I don't want to stress you with this motto, but I, I really think it's actually for everyone here who is joining this and dealing with this uh, playing motto in auditions, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good, it's fair for them also. So um, try to think first about your, your rhythmus at the beginning. It's, a, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. I'm going to use those two uh, equilibriums, you know, rhythmical versus um, personality. Okay, so your, your first breath already when I, I was listening to you, I got nervous. It, it's a little bit like I, like I spoke with, with uh, Ronia, but the first breath is so important because you took the breath now on your little eight notes uh, pause and then you rushed the first uh, uh, scale. So it already didn't start the, in the most fantastic way. And, and, and when, when we do these um, auditions and it's the first note we're playing, we are so nervous. Everyone is, is, is nervous. So if you can try to think about the things that would calm you down, which first thing is your breath. And if you really think to breathe rhythmically in the tempo. So if we take the breath on the first eight notes that we, the last eight note we have before we play, we're already getting tense and we're getting like, and then the note do, don't speak. Although they did speak very beautifully, I have to say, you played really well. It's just a few really little things that I think can put it really on, a, on, a, on the highest level. So try to already uh, take the, the, start the, bre the breathing process at the beginning of the bar, not one second before you start, okay? okay. Another thing that caused that this is that you were already so short of uh, breath in the high D that you had to take such a big breath after that that it was late. The next, the, the next one. So that's already like two things that behind a curtain, it's already people would say, ah, not rhythmical enough. Okay? Okay. okay. As much as I, I like the energy and I like the sound and I, 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 I like the dynamic and everything, but if the, again, if the box is not really full, then it's not good enough. It's really, um, it's such a shitty, uh, thing. What can I say? Auditions are really cruel. Cool. That's why I wanted to play Mozart a lot, because we need to practice our Mozarts as much as, as it can be. Okay, so let's try to think again. Now, you want to, I wanted to start taking the breath in. Okay, so you're really ready with your air. Already, so the eight, the last eight notes of the, uh, before you start, you're already ready. It's not the time to take the breath. Okay. Okay, try it. Okay. Okay, good. Another small thing. We are, all of us, I, I, I just want to tell you from my, my little experience. I remember that I was preparing this for a big audition. I don't remember which, which audition it was. Um, and I was so nervous about this first trill. I was like, fuck, I mean, <laughs> how, how, many, how many notes should I do it? And then it's too much. And then my finger gets stuck and it's right in the beginning. And then I figure out something really simple. If I think about this trill, not as a trill, but as a rhythmical element, so if I think already, how many notes do I want to put in so that they will sound like a trill, but I could think about it as a rhythmical element, okay? Because now you're rushing there because you're stressed, okay? On, the, on this trill. Try to think about it as a, uh, as a six, six stoplet. I don't know if I'm saying it right in English. Six notes, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so that means we're starting from the upper note, from the E, and we play six notes slowly. <laughs> Then you have it. Then if I wake you up at two in the morning, you can play it. Because because now you rushed a little bit. Try to think of really six equal notes, okay, in one beat. Okay, and then because again I'm I'm stressing this out because it's such a difficult beginning. Those two modes of control, the beginnings are always the hardest. So that's what we need to know. We need to really know here what are we doing in a very again, that's why I feel with your brain. Okay, you're gonna be nervous, you feel the nervousness, but if the brain works and you know exactly what you're doing, when you start breathing, how you think about this annoying trill that stresses me out, okay? Then you're gonna have it right. So do once, just slowly, this trill as a, as a sextola, okay? Okay. 
Okay. Just this, just for me once. It's, it's a good thing. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's good. I'm just saying it's good for everyone. That's why I'm making you do it. Just to okay. be like it. No, it's too many notes, you see? That's it. Re, mi, re, mi, re, do, re. Mi, re, mi, re, do, re. Slowly. Pam, taka, 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 dam. Re, mi, re, mi, re, do, re, do. You're not totally with me in the rhythmical. It's maybe something just we need to think about. It's stressful now in front of everyone, but try to think about it really in a rhythmical uh, manner. Okay, so we have uh, one eighth note and then six notes, okay? Slowly. I have two more. You, because you're used to rush there. It's, you have more time. Pam, te ga da ga da ga dam. Pam, ti di 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 di. I have two more notes. Exactly, you don't need so many notes. That's why you're rushing there. Because you're so stressed of making those tricks. You don't need so many notes there. Okay? So it's okay. something to think about. Now, let's go to the high D. Okay? The high D is not such an interesting thing, right? Because the orchestra is playing the main the main melody. Okay, so I suggest, we also help you with the breath, that you hit the note. You did it sort of in the first time, but the second time I wasn't sure if you're doing it, so I just wanna emphasize. You hit the note and you go back. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I wanna hear really this gradual build, build up of the high D, okay, on four bars. So that's really can show me your character, like how much you're developing your sound and not just playing it, That's boring, right? So I just want to make sure that you emphasize this idea because you did it the first okay. time and then the second time wasn't so clear. So let's try again. Try to think about it as a, as a sixth note. I don't want to, uh, but whatever happens, happens. And then when you reach the note, you touch it and you go back. So. Okay. And then if you can, without the breath after the D would be great. Okay. okay. And really try to think about four gradual steps during this D. Every bar a little more. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's confusing me. It's confusing you. Try to think, the E is on the beat, okay? The E is on the beat. Dum, ta -ga -da -ga -da -ga -dum. I know it's stressful here because of this uh, forum. If you were in a, in a room, you just put a metronome on 60. I'm telling you how to work on it. You put a metronome on 60, which is double the tempo that we need, and you just play a sextola. Re, mi, re, mi, re, do, re, do. And then mm -hmm. when it's good in 60 for three times, you go to 65, three times. Then 70, three times, all right, till 120. And then it's in your blood, okay? Okay. Okay, last time and we focus on the on the, the next one. structure it's it's really very good you control everything the fingers everything is really good i need a bit more style also there was a tiny bit of um of problem with the with the internet so i could hear you like on and off uh, but okay. when you when you finish the high d try to really think that you play all the all the uh, the uh, the uh, quarter notes equal because sometimes you play one one longer one shorter and that's out of style so again now we are outside the box Mm -hmm. Okay, I need you more in the box in terms of the style of Mozart. Everything has to be really precise, okay? So when you go there... Yeah, pom, pom, pom. Always try to imagine M 
the letter M in the end of the note. Pum, pum, pi, okay? Okay. Now, last, another important thing. In classical period and, and in general, we always have to think what's the heavy part of the bar and what's the lightest part, right? So after the D, for instance, Right? The first A is the heavy part, so it needs more tension in the sound. And then the next A is the lightest. It's the second half of the bar is always light. So if you can do a bit more diminuendo, okay? So that's oh. stylish things that are really important when you do an audition. Because if you play, uh, then I hear, okay, she's not really in style. Okay. Okay, so try to think. Let's do it straight after the high D. Good, good, good. But what's it? Now we, are lo uh, we lost the tempo. Always think when, when you play this, you think in four or in two. That's oh. not what. I, I am thinking of it in two. Good. So in two, it's perfect. That's why I want to hear. But I don't hear it in your playing. So try to think more. One, two. So heavy, light. Okay? And end. We don't have so much time between the bars. Okay. okay? Try to be more accurate in, the, in this. Good, good, much, much better. Okay, also when you reach the, 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 the G sharp is the important note and the high D can be really always as a, something more elegant. Really okay. important to play Mozart with a lot of elegance. So always try to think that the second, the second part of the bar usually Need this kind of uh, American ice cream shape. <laughs> okay. okay, always try to think. Always try to think about food. It's, it's the best, <laughs> the best uh, imag Im uh, imagination thing. Okay, just okay. try. J just this. Okay. 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 Good. And yeah. continue. Good, excellent. When you finish the whole thing, finish with, with uh, I, I suggest you to finish with a bit more um, uh, crescendo. Pop here, da, da, da. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, that's an, it's another thing when you go on stage. Always try to feel more, don't be shy. So don't finish this. Uh, A bit more bravura. Now pay attention when you play the hard part. The hard part. Okay. When we play difficult things, what usually happens when we are in audition and well, stress? Not, I, I will be. I will be nervous. <laughs> of course, not not only you, everyone. But then what happens? We rush. We rush. Okay. We rush. So if we know it again, and then I'm telling you again, feel with your brain. So you know, we know we're gonna be nervous, meaning we know we're gonna rush. So I don't know if you're driving, but I always, if you have a driving license, but driving license, but I always think in these difficult moments to try and pull my arm brakes. Hold it. I know I'm going to be nervous. I'm not, I know I'm going to be rushing. So when you reach this place, try to think about it. Try to think, stay in tempo. Now you're really rushed over the whole, it, it was lovely actually. You played it really wonderful, but it was not really in tempo. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now another suggestion, just a musical idea. When you go down to the F sharp, I would, I would uh, suggest you to play more diminuendo when you go down, okay? And then build the whole thing till the end. Mm -hmm. I okay. wouldn't do this echo thing because usually it's just <laughs> less tasteful, I think. So try to sing more. And then really big crescendo till the end. Okay. Okay, straight from. Hold it. Oh, and last thing, I know I'm throwing you tons of information, 
I know that's what happens in 15 minutes, I uh, think. When you play staccato in a classical period like this, don't play too short, okay? That's another thing of style. Because otherwise it sounds almost as a Stravinsky kind of, uh, we don't want this kind of uh, very uh, pizzicato, very pinching uh, staccato. We want it a bit more brushed. So I wouldn't think taka taka taka. I would think more daga daga daga. So oh. for instance, the this, a bit more smooth, like a, a staccato, not so. Okay, that's to me too aggressive for Mozart. Okay, so it's another thing to think about. More the style, more elegant, less uh, aggressive. Okay, now play. <laughs> Good, and without slowing down, in tempo. Mm -hmm. Okay, much okay. better. Still, I think you can work a little bit with yourself about finding this softer staccato. I know it's very difficult to find like this with 100 people looking at you and with the internet uh, thing. But try to really think more with the air, less with the tongue. Less, tuk, 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 more dugu, dugu, dugu. Okay, more, okay. A, bit, a bit softer with the, with the tongue, okay? Okay. okay Shaket, thanks so much. I, I thank mean, you very much. No, thank you for, uh, for playing so beautifully, really great. Uh, okay, so uh, I was wondering if there are any uh, questions or things that you want to ask me. Um, um, then I can tell you from my little experience I had playing in different orchestras in different countries. Uh, I'm happy to, or anything else about uh, flute playing, practicing routines, whatever you want, you can uh, type and I'll try and answer. And if no one wants to ask, I can take another, maybe last person to play. If there is uh, any volunteer, if not, we can continue with Anna. Any questions, any thing you wanna ask me? Um, may I ask, what is your warm-up routine? Oshrat uh, is asking. So that's a great question because I'm, I actually uh, take a lot of uh, um, serious thoughts, usually about my routine when I warm up and I tend to always be warmed up when I, uh, when I come to rehearsal or anything. Even when I come to a lesson with uh, students, I usually warmed up. Um, so my warm-up is consisted these days from three parts. Um, the first part is actually an exercise that I do, which is basically um, a chromatic scale that is, um, I'm sort of dividing the flute into five parts. And the main point of this exercise is just to feel this, the flow of the air. So I'm basically wanna just warm up first my, um, my breathing and my um, exhaling and the air speed and the air pressure uh, and try and balance the, the sound of each octave. So I'm trying to really make the, the, the flute sound as equal, as equal as possible. So it starts from second B to F. with a big diminuendo and do a few times this and then I go to F till B. With a big diminuendo and when I finish this I go to the next one. And then up. So basically when I go through the whole flute, then I go and play one uh, long chromatic scale. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm sort of, all octaves sound sort of equal and I really push the air well between the notes. So it's sort of um, warm up for the air and for the timbre of the octave. So all this flute sounds sort of in the same timbre. 
And then I might do um, a tone exercise, uh, either Mouise de la Sonorité, one of the uh, four exercises, or uh, a tone exercises of Galway, which I really love, which is sort of um, uh, a play on the Mouise, which goes like this. Basically, I, I get a bit more melodic uh, playing and I notice the intonation when I play the arpeggios. And again, always with a big diminuendo. So I get to play uh, a healthy tone and I go and I really notice my airspeed when I go from forte, which is relaxed. To piano. Okay, when I finish this, I would go and do one of the Reichert daily exercises. I don't know if people are familiar with this. And I usually would do uh, one till five in a specific uh, scale. I would just choose a scale and go through them from slow to fast, staccato, legato. And that would be my warm up. Um, especially I like number two and number four and number five from from Reichert. They're very good for legato, for the intervals, and they're very good for staccato. Um, and staccato is another issue. I have seven different ways of uh, getting up my staccato, uh, which I can show in a, in a bit, but there was another a few. Ex uh, so there's a question about what's your approach, advice regarding vibrato? How can we avoid overdoing it? What's the right balance? So vibrato, um, I have a, an exercise um, that I do just to control the vibrato. Um, how do, how we're not overdoing it is obviously by being aware and listening to ourselves and think what type of vibrato or speed of vibrato or character of vibrato suits the piece I'm playing uh, or the character or the color or the atmosphere that I wanna um, express. Uh, but in order to have a wide palette of this expression through vibrato, I uh, usually put my metronome on 60 or on 50, and I, and I start working on one note from one amplitude per beat, and then I go from one to two to three to six. So I really get to play a very uh, a broad um, uh, amplitude at the beginning just to, uh, Practice it, for instance, if I take A, it doesn't matter. So really make, make sure that the amplitude is, is very round. It goes a little bit above the sound and a little bit under the sound. And it, uh, and it shouldn't look as if there is spikes in it. It should be really as round. Try to imagine those jellyfishes that go like this in the water. And uh, so that's what uh, that's one uh, amplitude per beat. And now I'm playing eight notes, so two per beat. Triplet. already gives me sort of the palette of, of uh, vibrato that I want. So if, for instance, if I want to play something very, uh, with a big intensity, I will use five amplitudes per beat or six, for instance, I don't know. Something that is very heroic. 
I would use probably a very um, intense vibrato, or if I'm playing For instance, I would use a much slower, broader vibrato, maybe triplets. So that's a good exercise to have a bit more variety is if you have a palette of colors and you can just choose. But again, that's exactly part of, of the theme of this talk that um, vibrato is a way to, of, of, of expression, of building tension or, um, uh, of, or releasing tension. So it's all very much intuitive and, and very much has to do with expression, but it has to be dealt by thinking about it and realizing that it has to be in some order, in some rhythmical order, so we can really control it when we want it. So we can either uh, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on in a very intensive way or turn it on in a very mild way, okay? But it has to be controlled. So that's why I want you to think about it. How do you control the vibrato? So that's Quick answer for that. Hi, what's the best exercise for getting your fingers run clean between the notes? Good advice. So um, two good advices for this is to play. I'm a huge believer of on slow playing. And till today, when I need to learn a passage or practice a passage, I would put my metronome half of the tempo that I uh, need to uh, perform uh, the passage and play three times in Let's say if I need the passage to be 120, I would go to 60 and I will play three good times slowly in 60 and make sure I'm not rushing and I'm really playing be between the notes and I make sure that every tone is beautiful and full and, and with the right expression. And when I have three good 60 times, I go to 70. And when I reach seven, three times, uh, I play well 70, I go to 80 and like this to 120. And I do this every day on the same passage, not just once, not just one day, but over a week, let's say. And another good exercise for fingers are uh, rhythmical exercises. My students that are here listening, they, pro they probably know these things. I call them the mind fuckers because they fu fuck your mind with the fingers. Uh, so for instance, everyone, we always do, um, the normal ones, which is dam ba dam ba dam ba dam tirim tirim tirim, but then I have other exercises uh, on top of this. So, for instance, uh, I need to find a passage, and um, if we do, if that's a passage, so we will go. That's the obvious one, and then that's another obvious one. But then I start to uh, take it to another. Uh, ways. So for instance, I would do triplets that the first two notes are 16 notes. Then I will move the 16 notes to the middle. Then the 16 note on the third. Then the first uh, three notes will be a triplet and then an eighth note. And so on. There's the many of these exercises that you can find in the great book of Moshe Epstein um, called Mind Your Fingers. Epstein was uh, uh, one of my dearest teachers, and this book is really great for solving uh, different uh, um, finger issues. Okay, next in many from Solve, uh, no. Yeah, that was she, Solvay. Hi, Solvay. She asked, in many auditions, you can often choose what Mozart and Chatea you want to play. Do you find it important to focus on both G and D, or have you focused just on one of them? Um, no, I always um, focused on both. Um, some auditions do require a specific one, um, but uh, just not to get too bored and keep it fresh, I would, I would always have both in my fingers. And, and try to, uh, to at least at the beginning, um, see if you have a preference. If, if you feel very more comfortable with one of them, then go with this one. Uh, but, uh, but I wouldn't uh, neglect the other one because sometimes, uh, um, the, sometimes there are um, auditions that are very specific. My, my audition in Italy, for instance, uh, was very specific. They asked for the D major with the Don John Cadenza. So I even 
had to prepare the cadenza that was asked. Uh, I have Anna on my screen, so I see her uh, astonishing look. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's just one um, example. Pedro, could you give some advice about rising pitch in second octave and first octave? So with, for pitch, you always have to, that's a big topic, uh, try to uh, speak about it quickly. Always try to uh, think about your um, airspeed or air quantity. Those are two different things. So if we play with a big air quantity, but not enough speed of air, we will lose uh, pitch. Okay, so always think that dynamic equals uh, uh, quantity of air and pitch equals speed of air. Okay, so if we play with a um, very low airspeed, but a lot of quantity of air, let's say A, the note will be flat. But if I reduce the amount, the quantity of air, but I increase the air speed, goes higher. Okay, so try to always focus when you do your, uh, especially your tone exercise, when you do a diminuendo, when we do a diminuendo, always remember diminuendo is actually is um, decreasing the air quantity, but increasing the air speed. Sometimes we're decreasing both. That's why we lose the pitch. So I'm actually increasing the air speed and reducing the air quantity. Okay, when, when we go to a, um, uh, a lower um, dynamic. I hope that somehow uh, helped. If you have some answer to get different tone colors, just really try to be as inspired as you can by, by, by different things in life. And when you do your tone exercises or any exercise, I always say that everything that we play is a tone exercise. It doesn't matter if it's scales or if it's a fast passage from a piece, it always has to do with tone. So um, I would just go and explore a little bit uh, the variety of, uh, of uh, tones and colors that the, the flute can do. I would not always play this healthy tone when I play tone exercises. I would one go, if I'm playing the Galway exercise, again, which, which goes once maybe I will play I don't know if that comes through, but to get this airy quality uh, of, of my, of my the, the, the flute can do uh, and really get a, a whispering tone. So all these things has to be practiced, have to be practiced when you, when you play your, your tone exercises. Okay, so vary, don't bore yourself with playing only healthy, loud um, tone all the time. Ciao Anita, what do you consider your most important orchestral experience and why? What a big question. Um, I would actually say that um, that each of my big uh, positions that I had uh, was a big experience for me, and each one was just a lesson for 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 different things. Playing uh, in a in a German music in a in a big German uh, opera house, uh, I was very lucky to play. Uh, the, the Ring, Wagner, and uh, to play all Mahler symphonies uh, in the two years when I was there. And it was a cycle and it was an astonishing um, experience. Uh, my work with Daniel Barenboim in the Divan Orchestra, West Eastern Divan, I didn't mention this, uh, over more, more than 10 years was an incredible um, learning experience. Um, playing Italian Puccini, Verdi, uh, Rossini in an Italian opera house is another qualities that you learn only by doing it with, uh, with an orchestra that has a different DNA um, uh, of, of, of sound quality, of singing quality, um, and, uh, and playing with the IPO has been uh, an amazing experience too, uh, with all the great conductors from uh, Meta through Honeck, um, Kirill Petrenko, you just learn from your 
colleagues that, oh, that hopefully would be uh, challenging you all the time. And I have to give my big love to our wonderful woodwind section of the IPO that actually um, uh, keep, I think we're always challenging each other uh, by playing and by speaking about music. Uh, there's a lot of interaction. Um, it's always more than just coming and playing uh, your job. It's always much more than this in the IPO. So that's, uh, that's a great uh, challenging experience that uh, makes you grow. Um, so it's basically about the musicians that you play with and work with. Um, Amir, uh, why, how did you start playing the flute and why? I was 11 and I was actually dreaming about playing the flute since I remember myself. There's actually a, a note that I wrote when I was six. Our uh, school teacher asked us, what are we going to be when we are grown-ups? And we had to give it to her. And of course, we forgot about it. And nine years after, she sent it to us. And mine said, uh, if I'm not mistaken, flute was the flute was the first thing. Pantomime artist was the second, scientist and something else, maybe conductor, I don't know. But flute was always there for me when I, since I was six. Um, my father used to play the orchestra, uh, in the orchestra the trumpet and I guess I, I heard this, the sound of the flute and I just uh, fell in love with it. It was always about the sound. How significant is the material of the flute, gold, silver? Uh, not that significant. I mean, it is significant because as when the... Um, Material is heavier, uh, it's, uh, it rejects more, um, and, it's, uh, and uh, you need to work harder uh, in order to produce the sound. But the results usually are richer. It's a matter of taste. Um, there are many countries that uh, play England, uh, been known for playing uh, traditionally uh, silver flutes, uh, which have different qualities. It's a bit more brilliant, it's a bit more bright, it's less dark. It responds easier. So there's many qualities for these two. Wooden flutes have their own uh, characteristics. Um, you just need to fall in love with, uh, with the flute. I, I wouldn't go for a certain, oh, I need to play a golden flute because uh, um, I always looked for a mellow, richer, darker sound for the flute. Maybe because for me, the flute in general, in, in, in general the characteristic of the instrument is high pitches, brilliant. So I, I always try to find an equilibrium that would take it into a more, give it a bit more uh, wide range of colors. So this gold flute that uh, I uh, arrived in my hands sort of by chance almost, uh, I just fell in love with. And uh, that's how I, I, before this, I, I used to play silver. Um, I think I need to s soon finish. But let's uh, finish those uh, quick answers. Are there flute extended techniques you practice in order to get a better tone in normal playing? Not really. Um, I know that some people like to do those overtones. It's not really extended techniques, but um, overtone uh, um, sound exercises. I, I never got into it because I always felt it was too much. Uh, somehow I uh, got my lips a bit too tense and I, I rather just uh, play my, my, my sound exercises and, and, and try to imagine the colors I wanna achieve. Sometimes I, I do those um, attack uh, pizzicato in order to get a better articulation at the beginning of the note. So I would go for the beginning just to get the air uh, standing in the mouth. And then I would divide the attack from uh, this slap tongue into air attack and slowly I would narrow the gap so it goes and so and so on uh, I would do it much slower than this and but basically I would think about again rhythmically So I really get a clear, um, a clear beginning of the note. Uh, I am in the post student, so I saw the Israeli chairman project back in the fall, and I'm sad that you won't get to see you guys again. Oh, could you talk about your experience? 
Wow, yes. Um, I, I did forget to mention the, my beloved ICP that is in the Israel, Israeli Chamber Project, which is, is my, uh, my chamber music group, uh, which is really amazing, uh, absolutely amazing. I could not rave more about them. Um, group, group of uh, people and musicians and friends. Um, and we play around uh, four or five uh, tours a year um, that include tours in Israel and then abroad, usually uh, states in Europe. Um, the group consists uh, of uh, flute, clarinet, piano, harp, and strings. Um, you're welcome to look in the website of the group. Um, and we were supposed to be right now actually in the States touring, uh, teaching in uh, um, Cornell University and playing a concert in New York. And sadly, uh, with this uh, situation, uh, the whole tour got canceled. So I really hope uh, to see you, Matthew, next time we are on tour. There are definitely plans to go back to the States. We are very often in the States. Um, and uh, the experience with this group is just different than to anything else because uh, this is really a group of friends above all that just love each other and love playing music together. Um, and um, it's another type of music making. It's much more intimate. Uh, it can be much more funny than uh, normal orchestral experience uh, rehearsals. And uh, we have the privilege of, of working very deeply on each program that we take. Um, so uh, we can really go to the bones and flesh of each piece that we are uh, taking on. And, and that's amazing because uh, it really makes you feel that you are um, one, one part, one, one um, sort of one piece with the piece of music. So the, because, uh, because the understanding is so deep and the, uh, and the time, we take the time really to um, to go through um, uh, every aspect of the piece we are taking on, unlike uh, some occasional chamber music uh, gig that you need to put together or festivals. This is really uh, very deep um, music making. So it's a, it's an amazing, amazing group. I think that's maybe was the last question and it's perfect for my time because I need to put my baby to sleep. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining. That was such a privilege for me to meet you and to hear the people that played. And um, I cannot be more grateful that uh, we had such a fantastic meeting. I learned myself a lot from just speaking about those things uh, again. And um, I hope we get to meet uh, somewhere and stay safe, stay healthy. Um, and uh, make it all easy and keep practicing and listening to music and being inspired by different arts, listen to operas, go to see paintings online, uh, be inspired. Okay? So thanks so much. It was really lovely to see everyone.